Let's review how to perform a return or an exchange in Retail Pro Prism. I'm at the Retail Pro Prism point of sale module. Select New Transaction. Select the associate who will be credited with this return. Choose Return at the top menu. Choose Search for Receipt. If you know the document number, also known as the receipt number, you can key that in here. Make sure that you've selected the appropriate date range and choose search. Now you'll see the transaction number. Click on that transaction number and you'll see the items on that transaction. In this case, there was only one. You'll note that there, there was a quantity sold of one and there's still a quantity available to return of one. Had this item been previously returned, that would say zero. Click on the item you want to return. Click on return item. Make sure to select the return reason. Return to document. And now you can proceed with the transaction. Go ahead and choose the tender type. Give. Update. Let's do another one. For this example, I'll key in the item that I'm returning. Choose item type. Choose return. Retail Pro prompts you whether or not you want to reference an existing receipt. Let's choose yes for this example. Again, you have the, re the return lookup filter. Select the date range you want to search in. If you know the document number, you can key that in. If you know the customer's last name, you can key that in. Of course, if you're going to go by the last name, it has to that that's under the assumption that you entered or captured the customer's last name during the original transaction process. For our example, I'm just going to go ahead and choose search. And what I want you to notice is that the transactions that have returned on the screen are only transactions that fall within this date range and that reference that SKU that I entered. So for example, if I click on this transaction, you'll see that that SKU is there. If I click on this other transaction, you'll see that that SKU is there. And there it is. Go ahead and select the item that you want to return. Choose return item. Always make sure to select your return reason. Return to document. Now, in this example, I'm choosing credit as the refund type, and I have my system set up to require a customer be entered if I'm returning to a credit card. You can go ahead and look for the customer. In this example, I'll type in the letter J and an asterisk, which is telling Retail Pro to show me all of the customers who begin, whose first name begins with the letter J. You can go ahead and choose the appropriate customer, and now you can proceed. If the customer wasn't existing, you could have instead selected to, to key in a new customer on the fly. At minimum, you would have to capture the first and the last name, and of course you should capture as much information as you can, and you would have hit save. Let's go ahead and proceed to issue this refund. Give update. Let's do another one. In this third example of a return, I'll go ahead and scan the item again or key it in. I'll choose item type. I'll choose return. But this time, when prompted whether or not to reference the original receipt, I'll choose no. What this means is you're telling Retail Pro to go ahead and return this item into inventory without 
any reference to an original transaction. Again, if I try to refund this to a credit card, Retail Pro will warn me that I need to select a customer if I didn't have one in there already. I'll go ahead and put in a customer. And this customer happens to already exist in the system and only happens to be one exact match. Go ahead and choose the credit. And update. So to recap, there was three methods that we just went over. One method was to click return and search for receipt. Another method was to scan the item, choose return type, choose return, and select the original transaction. The third method was to list the SKU and to choose no when prompted to return the transaction, to reference the original transaction. Let's go ahead and do an exchange. Scan the item that the customer is returning to you. Choose item type, choose return, and again, choose whether or not you want to reference an original, original transaction. For our purposes, I'll choose no. Next, scan the item that they're going to take in exchange. Notice that that item scans in by default as a sale item. Notice that there is a difference in the price. The item that's been returned is $140, but the item that they're taking is $160. Therefore, there's a balance due of $45.20, which takes into account the tax. Because there's a positive balance, that means that the customer owes us money and will need to pay for the balance. Let's go ahead and choose cash. Again, my system is set up to require a customer for these cases. I'll choose cash. I'll say they're giving me $50. Let's take that. Let's give them the change back in cash. Update only. That's it. We've created an exchange.